Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called No Escape by OOMM Board Games. It is for two to eight players, takes about 45 minutes to play the game, and it's ages 13 and up. In the game No Escape, you're going to be a person on like a spacecraft or space shuttle, and you're trying to escape. And basically, I, I, I consider it a way, just like on the box here, how it shows like this explosion that's happening, and you are running away from it. You can always only run forward and if there's somebody in front of you you're gonna have to push them and get them out of the way as you continue to run your objective is to get out of there as soon as possible but unfortunately your opponents are doing the same thing and they want to be the first to escape if they escape they're going to win the game so what you're going to do is by placing new tiles on the board you're going to open up more portions of the craft making it harder for them to get out everyone else will do this at the same time as well as you progressively increase the shuttle until somebody is finally able to notch their way into victory by rolling dice and adding little different um, tiles that are going to give you actions and whatnot. There's also some other cool stuff like teleportation and the ability to use energy that's going to give you a little bit of a boost as well as the ability to do a couple other things which I'll explain below. But that is the basic idea of the game No Escape. Let's go ahead and take a look. So here we have the game No Escape and as you see it's going to come with the main game board, the box, a little bit of a rule book here, and a bunch of tiles which will be being placed throughout the game. These are the different types of tiles here. You're going to have action tiles, you're going to have stop action tiles tiles, teleportation tiles, energy tiles, the basic type of tile that is placed, as well as this tile, which is also a basic one, except for the fact that this can go on top of it, uh, depending on whether or not you land on this thing, and you can then move across this way, so it's kind of a little unique tile with this little Crossion symbol. You're also going to get some energy, three a person, you're going to pick a character to start here, there's two dice in the game, and also a bunch of these tiles as well to be used, up to eight players with a front and back board from two to four to four to eight. If you've chosen the amount of players you're going to be playing with, and which side of the board you're going to be using, you're going to get yourself three energy and it's going to start on the green side. You're going to put your player pawn in the middle of the board and then you're going to get a hand of playing tiles. After you get your hand of playing tiles, then you're then going to be able to use an action tile and play a regular tile. A regular tile is one that you can place on the board and an action tile is what's going to happen randomly throughout the game when you use them. And of course somebody can counter that even though it's on, not on their turn with a stop action card. After I will go ahead and place a uh, token, or sorry, a tile on the board here, then I'm going to roll both dice and move in that direction of that uh, of the, my choosing. And you're always going to be moving forward and you can never go and turn, go backwards, but you can always make a choice to go left or right. Whenever somebody is in front of you, however, you're going to have to push them along until they decide which way they want to go, what left or right, uh, in an intersection, and then you can choose to go the other way. Otherwise, you're going to be pushing them ahead. So you're always going to try and want to not be pushing people as, if, if you possibly can. And, like I said, you're going to continue going along that way after somebody has chosen to play their action card as well as their tile. You're going to be drawing tiles and then moving along until somebody can escape the board. All at the same time watching for teleporters which might help you along with your re refreshing your energy and placing these unique tiles that can actually change the game in some unique ways. Alright, let's go ahead and take below and I'll show you a couple turns on how to play the game No Escape. So the game's all set up for four players and everybody's got their energy and their three tiles to start with. The first player will be this guy here, that's why I've shown you what, card what cards he has or tiles he has, and he's going to start by choosing to play an action tile which he doesn't have, so he's going to move on to placing a tile down. He can place him down in any legitimate area that has to be attached to one of the pieces on the board already. So this would be a legal placement just like that. After he's placed one of his tiles, he's simply going to roll the dice. And he's got a three and a five, and then he can go ahead and move. A three and a two, sorry, which is five. One, two, three, four, and five. After he's done with that, at the end of his turn, he's simply going to draw a new tile up to three, and then he's going to pass. The next player is then going to get a chance to play, and he's got a couple action tiles here. That's kind of cool. This one says, tactical update, you can play two maze tiles this turn, but unfortunately he doesn't have two, only has one. But he can also target player that draws three tiles. So he can go ahead and discard this. This will give him three tiles. And so on his next turn, if he happens to have two, oh, he doesn't, he got one bunch of action tiles he'll be able to play two but now he can go ahead and choose to do this and he'll be the red player he's going to go ahead and roll his dice Oop, he doesn't want to go there he doesn't want to place it there he wants to place it here all right so he's got three and the red will go this way one two and three all right now the next player is going to get to go he doesn't get to draw because he has three cards already so he always draws up to three so he has four now the next player back here is going to be white he's got target player draws three tiles as well so he's going to go ahead and do that all right he's got a bunch of good stuff here and, like I was saying before, I can use this to refresh energy, as well as playing one of these new paths, which you can't do just yet. And then I've got this teleporter. Teleporters can always go white to white, or white to yellow, but never yellow to white. And he will choose to place this like that. 
Okay, and so now he's going to roll. And he's got two. Now, does he want to go this way and block this person off? Maybe. Maybe he wants to go this way. We'll just we'll go this way, just to make it interesting. All right, so the next player is up. He already has three from four, so he doesn't need to draw. And he's... Oh, no, no, he doesn't Sorry, he doesn't do that. <laughs> now he's going to go ahead and... Oh, he'll use equipment locker. Everybody gets to draw a new tile. Everybody gets one, including himself. And he's got this one here, structural damage, change positions of any one tile on the board with any other. Ooh, that's really good, so he can save this, so nobody knows he has nobody knows he has this one. But he will go ahead and play this. Alright, and now he's gonna go ahead and roll his dice. And he's got two. Oh, sad days for him. Okay, but he gets to draw up to three at the end of his turn. And then we gotta stop and replace immediately play to replace any maze tile just played with the tile in your hand. So he'll save that for later. And now it's back to this guy's turn again. He's going to go ahead and look at the tiles in his hand and maybe play something a little smaller. Maybe he'll play this. Maybe he's actually going to try and go this way. And he's the blue guy, so he's going to go ahead and roll. Hope for good stuff. He's got five. That's not too bad. One, two, three, four, five. So he just cut off red here. So now red would have to be bumping him along, which would make this guy win. So he's going to have to actually have some competition. So he's done. He still has three cards in his hand, and the next player is going to get to go, and it's red. Red's going to go ahead and place a... No, he doesn't want to do that. Uh, draw two tiles and play one and keep the other. Yeah, we'll do that. So draw two tiles. Play one and discard the other. Oh, play one and keep the other, okay. Hmm. So he'll keep this one. Switch location with another tile. Uh, switch locations with another player. Okay, this is awesome, he's gonna do this. And now he's gonna go ahead and switch locations. So he just stole Blue's location and he's going to then end his turn. Actually, no, he can still play a basic tile. I guess he'll do that, so he'll go ahead and place this just like that, I suppose. And then the next player is going to get to go. And it's going to continue like that until somebody escapes off the board. Of course, everybody else is going to be trying to stop the players from doing so by placing tiles to block them or continue their path. You're going to run into things like this, where if a player goes here, can always choose to go back to the yellow area or any other one. He can all People can also use energy. Energy is going to give you a boost whenever you use it of plus one to your movement, as well as being able to play one of these, which is also very useful. But it has to be on those little specific tiles I told you about. And there's a bunch of other cards we'll be using that are involving actions as well as stop actions, so on and so forth. So also, it's like, like something like this, players could play this. Let's see if I can do that. So I can make, make this go there, make this go back there. It kind of blocks paths off. You can never block all the paths though, so you have to be careful about that. But the objective still remains the same. Can you escape or are you going to be stuck with the explosion and decimate yourself? All right, let's go ahead and talk about it. Okay, so one quick correction. First of all, the energy does not let you put a new path on the board. Actually, what it does is it gives you plus one to your movement, as well as letting you jump over players so you don't have to keep pushing them. Also, what does give you the ability to do a new path is this one here. This is a white command center. It will refresh all of your energy and will give you the ability to choose to uh, place one of these tiles down. So that's only a little misstep I did. Whoops, sorry about that. But nevertheless, that's the idea of the game. There comes a lot of different stuff like toolkits to draw two tiles, keep one, remove the other. Everybody's going to draw a card, draw three cards, discard three cards. Another interesting too is if you can't play a tile in your hand, you're going to have to discard your entire hand and draw from the top of the deck until you get a tile that you can play. And once you play that at the end of your turn, then you're going to draw three. So just be aware that when you can't play tiles, you're going to be forced into playing a tile so that it could, it could be one you don't really want or not very helpful for, for to you. And the objective story is the same. You always want to keep your path as short as possible while making your opponent's path as long as possible. So let me tell you what I think about it now. So No Escape is a tile placement game that comes with a bit of like risk and, and nervousness, right? Because you're trying to get as fast as you can. Sometimes you're going to roll duds with the luck of the dice and sometimes you won't. People that don't like the roll to move aspect in games may not like this as well, but it does have some different changes where you'll be able to move your pond around stuff like that because you're going to be using these tiles here that will change the flow of the game. It feels like a dexterity game but it's really not a dexterity game although it kind of has that like you're afraid and you have to push forward no matter what so you're always running from the explosion behind you. And remember cool guys don't look at explosions so you always have to just keep going forward and you have to push your opponents out of the way or jump over them using energy. Uh, one thing I can say about this game instantly that came to mind was I played this two players I did not like it straight up. It was not a fun game for me because it was just 
just back and forth, and whoever got the best tiles and whoever's like the best rolls, it was it was just very one-sided, normally speaking. And that's just kind of how it's going to go with these kind of games. But when more and more players joined the game, it became a little bit different. You started pairing up with people, trying to mess with somebody who's too far ahead, and trying to get yourself farther ahead. The game became a little bit longer, depending on the number of players you put, because that's going to increase the amount of tiles and stop players that are roaming too far ahead. But it's also going to be becoming more enticing because you're going to be using the teleportation pods, you're going to be using your energy a lot more, and so on and so forth. In a two-player game, the board's so big, and you're most likely going to be going different directions, and what happens sometimes for my first game is he rolls and he moves two, and I roll and move six, and then he rolls and moves uh, three, and I ro roll and move four, and then he switches spaces with me, and he's way far ahead now, even though I had placed the best tiles and rolled the best. It didn't matter because he switched, and then he ended up winning. It was pretty quick, so that can happen. But not as likely in a multiplayer game when we played with five players and six players. It got way more intense, way more hectic and crazy, and I think that's really what the game is about. It's about having to deal with all the problems <laughs> that are behind you and worrying about what's in front of you all at the same time. It feels like it's a never-ending <laughs> never ending hallway of disaster waiting for you. And if people don't like you, it can be pretty intense. You're going to have to use all of your ingenuity. And there is definitely strategy in this game because you're going to be pulling cards and saving them to be used at the right time. But you also can't hold on to too many of those action cards because if you do, you're going to end up having no tile cards to play. So you have to discard your hand. So you don't want to do that either. So it's a kind of like, it's a weighing style game and it feels that. The uh, art of the game is pretty cool. I like it. I've just got this little uh, space dude here and he's just running for his life away from the huge experience explosion and the tiles are basically feels like you're in some kind of like structure of some sort and you're trying to get through I am interested in seeing what it's gonna look like when it's fully done the components here are pretty fleshed out pretty nice I mean most of it's a it is a prototype so I'm wondering what it's gonna be fully like when it's done but overall I I think it's pretty nice uh, so my final judgment is I really do like this game but I want to only play it with a certain number of players it has to be at least four plus before I'd even consider it and I also think that the game could use probably something more instead of actions the tiles maybe an action card system or something like that just to give it even more flavor and even more options because while it does have a, a decent amount in a larger player game to make me increasingly like the shorter the lower player games i think something like that would kind of improve it but overall no escape is a good game and i definitely support you trying to escape the huge explosion ba exploding base thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer kickstarter board game review if you like this video go check out the rest of our videos here on youtube like subscribe and comment it all does help as well as checking out the game no escape which will be on kickstarter in the description below. I'm just going to say, watch out for having all these paths working out so well, then you get blocked and have to go all the way back to the beginning or have to trek all the way back. That can be nerving. But also go ahead and check out the website, unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more, as well as our personal friends and affiliates, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and Ferdinand the Cardboard Stack, and your new great tutorials and blog posts. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time.